Hey guys, Andy here. Um, I have today what will hopefully be an interesting head-to-head. -head. On the left, my one-year-old Nexus 5, and on the right, my brand spanking new Motorola-built Nexus 6. Now, hardware-wise, they're really quite different. The Nexus 5 running um, a 2.3 gigahertz Crate 400 on Snapdragon 800 chipsets with the Adreno 330 GPU and 2 gig RAM. The Nexus 6 running a quad-core 2.7 gigahertz Crate 450 running on Snapdragon 805 and Adreno 420 GPU and 3 gig of RAM. They do, however, have identical versions of Android 5.0, rather down to the build number. Or was that R, uh, LRX210? Um, I mean, the other big difference being obviously the price point. So the Nexus 5, even on release day, was I believe only £300 for the uh, 16 gig version. I paid 480 SIM free for my uh, 32 gig Nexus 6. So the 5 being considerably cheaper, not quite half, but I don't know, in the region of 60% of, uh, of the Nexus 6. So It'll be interesting to see how they match up with what's effectively, you could say, is a mid-range phone, really, the Nexus 5, against what should really be... I, mean, I don't know if you could say it should be top-end, because the top-end now, are, they're charging £600, but uh, in theory, top-end. Now, what I realised on the boot test, my Nexus 6 is encrypted and uh, does require a password on boot, so what you won't might not have noticed, but I cut out seven seconds there where I punched in my uh, password. I'm now going to speed the footage up by three because actually the Nexus 6 takes forever to boot up. I'm assuming because of the encryption. Now, to be honest, the Nexus 5 should be encrypted, but I have a funny feeling it's not. Um, I know obviously Lollipop should be always encrypted, but I don't think, um, I don't believe it is. So finally, the Nexus 6 boots up. A bit unfair though, that boot test perhaps. So we'll move right on to the Angry Birds opening test. And we see here the uh, Nexus 5 edging ahead and is definitely, well I say definitely, it's only by uh, sort of a split second, but it was open first. So we'll, we'll give that another run because that was very close. The Nexus 5 looks to be just ahead, still just ahead as it opens the title, but then the Nexus 6 sneaks through of the last second. It's quite interesting how uh, the 5 started faster, but the 6 finished faster. And here we go again. The 5 looks to be ahead. This is the side of still the 5. That was the 6 by split seconds. Well, not, not plural, split second. So, barely anything between them in that. Let's move on to the benchmark where you have to think the Nexus 6 is going to smash the uh, Nexus 5. Uh, the Nexus 6 has actually produced the best benchmarks I've seen yet. Just inching out the Note 4, um, I think this, the Note 4, and the OnePlus One being the only devices going over 3,000. There we go. So obviously I cut out the, the boring middle bit. But uh, once again, I think that's the highest score I've seen, 3,313. But against 2,790, that's still a perfectly respectable score. A lot of devices out this year probably wouldn't, well, they, they would get to that score, but it, uh, they wouldn't go a great deal higher. Now we move outdoors for the GPS test. As usual, I let them both get a lock, and as you can see, they have both got a lock. I reset and I come out. You see it says internal GPS state cleared. I then go back into the app. Now the problem here is, and I probably should, maybe should have tried running it again, but the Nexus 5 took a very long time to lock. Um, I do think, so there's the Nexus 6 locked already, that was pretty quick. Eight satellites. I think basically I do have a slight fault with my Nexus 5. Sometimes it just doesn't seem to want to lock. I've never had a problem, I've used it for, for navigation of things, never an issue. Um, just sometimes it seems to struggle, as it did in this case, and maybe I should have just reset and start again to try again to get one where it actually worked. When it works, it, it locks reasonably quick. Um, either way, I think you have to give that to the Nexus 6, a very quick lock. So we move on to the speaker test. I'm going to try and uh, talk before the music this time. I know people complain when I talk over the music. So we're going with Legacy and uh, some podcast. Let's play first. Tell me where to go, tell me what to do I'll be right there for you Tell me where to go, tell me what to do I'll be right there for you Tell me what to say, better 
if it's true I'll say it all for you I want to say it no matter if it's true I'll say it all for you For you The complex on a 10 speed Which I've acquired parts of the garbage A brain can put tires on it I bother even trying to put up a So I think they're clearly the Nexus 6 has the better sounding speakers. It's stereo front-facing speakers give good volume, good roundness, and to be honest, no one's ever been impressed by them. Essentially, Nexus gave organizations like GCHQ and the NSA a free reign to go do mass surveillance. No. Essentially, gave organizations like GCHQ and the NSA a free reign to go do mass surveillance. Also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws, and now we're in the situation where people are clamoring for the Googles and the Facebooks and the Twitters to. Also uh, overturned a lot of the rules and laws, and now we're in the situation where people are clamoring for the Googles and the Facebooks and the Twitters to. I think to me that's even clearer that the uh, the spoken voice is just so much. I mean, I use the word rounded, and to me the volume is much, uh, is much, is much a rounder sound on the Nexus Six. Nice almost you know a bit of bass in there even which you don't expect from a phone really um so clearly easily for me easily the nexus 6 the better speaker we move on to the browser test clear both browsing history then uh, we'll move on to the first website being the bbc website i will try to tap out at the same time I kind of think it looked like I tapped the 5 slightly earlier. Maybe, maybe not. The 5 definitely was loaded quicker. Um, both are very smooth in the scrolling, I would say. So I think, yeah, you have to give that to the 5. I don't know, you tell me, did I tap the, the left quicker? And again, the Nexus 5 loading quicker. Now, people talk about the amount of pixels the devices are having to push, but I don't know, I struggle with that because it's not, I mean, they're not physically pushing pixels, so why... <coughs> Excuse me. Why would it really take that much longer for more pixels to load than you know? It's not like you load them individually. Sure, it's uh, it all happens at the same time. So I don't. Know. If anyone knows the actual logic of it, please let me know. We finish off with Engadget and look the M5 again. Very quick to load. Very quick. So I think all around that's been uh, that's been quite an interesting test. Only really the benchmark and the speaker, and I suppose the GPS, but then I think that's because mine is a bit faulty. We probably should ignore the GPS test. Uh, so the benchmark and the speaker, definitely the Nexus 6. But apart from that, is there really that much? You know, we talk about, you know, okay, this is, they're both very smooth. Lollipop is such a slick operating system now. Is there really that much difference between the two? Um, it, I guess it's more about the size. This is why I'm, quite, I'm in some ways I'm quite pleased that Google brought out the the phablet style this year because actually the Nexus Five will still hold its own. So now you get the choice: which do you need? You've got both versions running perfectly pure stock Android. You make the decision based on the screen size, really, and the, the you know the size of the device. So there you go, my name's Andy. I'll catch you all again soon.